We've been in our new warehouse and office for a few months now and while it's definitely still a work in progress, it does have most of the main things that we need to set up. But one thing that I've been waiting to do for ages is to get some new desks for our workstations. Because up until now, we've just been kind of working on old tables that we had around. The one behind me that I use, you might notice, is from the old videos from the old house. And my dad has been kind of rocking some old table from the 80s or something. So I think we definitely need an upgrade to some standing desks, which, little spoiler, I've never ever used a standing desk before. So I'm really looking forward to giving it a shot. And it's got me thinking, is there a way to automate a standing desk with Home Assistant so that we can control the position, automatically raise and lower if I've been sitting too long, or even for upcoming meetings, and so on. So I'm really excited to get started and finally get a good quality desk to work from. And let's check out the desks. I actually emailed FlexiSpot because I've heard some really good things about their desks. And I was like, hey, would you mind sending over some desks for me to hack up and modify and try and make smart with Home Assistant? And surprisingly, they were like, hell yeah, we're in. And they actually sent over not only a couple of desks for this project, but also a bunch of peripherals too. So first up here, we have the E7 Pro, which is kind of like their new next gen model with an even bigger weight capacity and an even bigger height range uh, compared to the original model. And it's got dual motors with a bunch of tabletop options. We've got a black one and a bamboo one over there. And we've also got the absolute monster E7Q here, which has a ridiculous weight capacity of something like 300 kilos or something because it's got quad motors. And they also sent over some accessories like their new premium chair, which is the C7 Air. Uh, as well as a bunch of like cable management and uh, a holder for the computer tower so that it all goes up with the desk and everything like that. All of this stuff will hopefully keep the setup really nice and clean. But first, before we get automating them, we need to actually build them. And I think we'll start with this E7 Pro first. I'm sure there are lots of standing desk experts out there, but if you're like me and you've never seen one before, I did kind of want to show you how it works. So on this model, up at the front, we have the main brains of the operation, which is this controller, which lets you raise and lower the, raise and lower the desk from the front with the buttons. It's got a bunch of preset options uh, for sit stand and a couple of memory options too for different positions. And this has just got a single cable on it uh, running to a black box in the center, which is for controlling the motor. So the motor from the left and the right leg will plug into this motor controller with just a single cable each. And what I do like about this is that the cable on the controller itself is not proprietary. So that just plugs in with a single RJ45 end, as you can see which is great for not only figuring out the wiring, which makes it really easy, but it's also great for repairability because if the cable gets damaged, you can literally just cut the end off, put a new RJ45 end on there and you're good to go. Now, typically if we wanted to make something that was going to control this desk, we would usually need to cut this wire up and then wire it up to a controller like an ESP32 and then figure out what the protocol it used and all of the commands and read those on the ESP and then relay them to the motor controller in the middle and kind of have the ESP32 acting as a middleman intercepting the traffic and relaying it. But one thing that's really nice about these FlexiSpot desks is that the controllers in the middle have a secondary RJ45 port, which is for an additional controller. So in this case, we can just wire up an ESP32 to that second port that's on the controller, leave the physical buttons intact, and then you don't have to actually cut up your original cable and void the warranty or anything like that. But we do still need to figure out how and also what we are going to use to speak to the motor in the middle through our ESP. 
Now, there are a lot of approaches you can do to figure this out. However, these flexi spot desks are actually pretty popular and there's some great documentation out there from users who have been able to figure these things out already and figure out what the pinout is. Now, it does vary depending on which model of controller you have. However, the common element between them is that they all use RX and TX pins, which is, of course, good old reliable serial communication. So now we know what the protocol is, we need to figure out what the commands are getting sent between this controller when somebody presses the up button and the down button and what is received on the motor unit so that we can replicate that on our ESP32 with ESP Home. Using just a simple multimeter to confirm which wire is which on our particular controller for our desk, we've checked out which is the five volt pins, the ground wire, the TX and RX pins for the serial and also the reset pins. And we've got this hooked up to our oscilloscope over here, which is going to help us hopefully plot out the commands for up, down, memory, and some of the presets and so on. But we do need to do a little bit of intercepting so that we can read what the controller is sending and receiving. So we've got the controller wire here that comes out of the back of the controller and it's going into the back of or into a female ethernet jack, which is then gonna go across using some jumper wires into another female jack that is on the opposite side. And then we have the wire from this jack going into the motor. And then on the back of the punch down pins, we just connected up our oscilloscope probes to the RX and TX lines so that we can plot out all of the commands. Now, if we enable the TX line on our oscilloscope, you'll see that immediately, even without the desk moving, we are getting a lot of constant traffic through our controller that is being displayed on the TX lines, which is most likely a heartbeat or a wake up type of signal. And if we try and actually capture one of these heartbeat signals, and then we kind of zoom in on one of the waveforms, you'll see that down at the bottom, our oscilloscope is decoding the signal for us into bytes of data, which we can see that's transmitting 9B 06020006C A19D which means that we are getting some reliable data uh, through our oscilloscope and we're kind of seeing information that makes sense. But we aren't actually interested in the heartbeat data per se. So what happens if we press the up button and then capture the information that is being sent? So if we press the up button on the desk, it doesn't really look like much happens on the surface. But if we press and hold the up button and then capture the data, like so, and then we zoom in on the actual data being produced, you'll see that the payload or the serial data that's being decoded is ever so slightly different than that heartbeat signal. So this bit in the middle is the most significant change. So we have the 9B0602, same as the heartbeat, but then it changes and we get 0100, which we can see is different to the heartbeat signal. And this is most likely the payload for triggering the desk to go up. If we now try the down command, in theory, we should get different data once again. When you press the down signal, it shows in the middle we have 0200. So that means we have 00 for the heartbeat, 01 for the up command, and 02 for the down command. And basically, it's just a case of going through and systematically pressing each button on the controller or the remote, capturing and noting down the serial data that is being logged, and repeating that for each button on the remote. Now, obviously a oscilloscope is expensive and not something everyone has, but you can do the exact same with just a simple USB to serial converter and just logging everything through a laptop instead. It just takes a little bit more patience, but it is totally doable with just a very cheap USB to serial converter. Normally, once we've been through and pressed all the buttons on the controller and figured out all the commands, we could then try and write some code that would send those commands and listen for responses over serial with our ESP32, for example. But luckily we don't need to do that because there are a few smart people out there who have already done all of the hard work like this and turned it into a complete Home Assistant project to integrate right into Home Assistant, which is awesome. 
This one here from iMicNL has lots of great information for different controllers since there are a few different models that FlexiSpot uses depending on the model of desk and it even has some ready to go YAMLs on his repository. So all I need to do is upload one of these YAMLs onto my ESP and I'm ready to go. I do want to make some changes to the hardware though because we want to activate some additional features on our desk, which are mainly going to be Assist, which is Home Assistant's voice assistant. And that's gonna let us use voice commands for raising the desk or lowering the desk, but also asking like, what's the temperature or setting the temperature, what's the weather like outside and all of that good stuff. We can do that on our ESP32. And we're actually using the ESP32S. Three. And this one has PS RAM, which is going to allow us to run the wake word for assist directly on the chip. Now we could offload the wake word processing into Home Assistant, but if we use the S3 with PS RAM, we can do the wake word directly on the chip and save Home Assistant some processing power. We're also gonna be activating like Bluetooth proxy and all that good stuff because the S3 has a lot of processing power and it can kind of handle that. We've also got a amplifier and a speaker. So we have the Max 9857A amplifier and a little speaker. The speaker is not gonna be good enough for like music or anything like that, but it will be good for little text-to-speech notifications and letting us know if someone's in the building or the door opened or whatever. We've also got a ICS434334 microphone, which is a great little microphone if you can find one. They can be a little tricky to find, but really good quality if you can find one, and I do recommend that. And they're all gonna connect up to our S3 on this perf board. I'm just gonna solder some headers onto our perf board, which will then make our S3 removable so that we can disconnect it and flash it and do whatever if we need to in the future. And hopefully that's just gonna fit into our little project box here, which just finished printing. And this is a great little project box. I'll put it a link down in the description if you want to use it. It's got a little exit hole on the side for our network cable that's gonna plug into our desk from the side of this little project box. And it's also got little vent holes for the speaker and the microphone. And let's get soldering all this and get it into the desk. I just added a couple of rows of headers, soldered them together, and then everything is now connected. And basically it's just gonna sit inside of the little enclosure like this with our network cable coming out the side. And don't worry guys, I will 100% come back and fix this, fix this wiring in the future. I will for sure do that. Don't panic, you know I will, I will. I'll fix this for sure. Uh, and basically out the side, you can see that we just, I just cut up a little ethernet cable, um, ran it out of the side of the case. It's got our RJ45 end and connected them onto DuPont wires onto the S3 also. And basically all that we need to do is to load our ESP home firmware on here, which I will put down in the description if you want to follow along or see what I did. And then we just plug in the other end to the secondary controller port on here. It gets power, data, serial, all of that kind of thing. Put the lid on and uh, yeah, we're good to go. By the way, slight side note, I have to show you the chair and the desk that my dad has been using for the last few months. It's, just look at this. Just look at this bad boy. I can't believe he's been using this and he doesn't have like chronic backache in his desk is even worse. <laughs> it's definitely going to be a big upgrade for him. This is a crazy upgrade from this guy. This guy's like no padding. You're like basically sitting on wood the entire time. That's what she said. <laughs> Yeah, this has got nice breathable foam, adjustable armrest, headrest, everything is adjustable. Wow, this is such a big upgrade for him. He's gonna be really happy. I messed up. Finally, I didn't read the order form properly and I put the wrong 
legs on the wrong tabletop and it was the wrong way around. So I fixed it now, put the right tabletop on the right set of legs and we're back to where we were. But now it's finally time to try and plug this in and see if it works. I've made the cable kind of pretty much the exact length that we need to just kind of sit in, plug into this secondary controller here, and then it's gonna sit at the back of the tabletop so it'll be completely out of the way, won't get hit or anything, and it's just gonna sit right against the bars there. And hopefully, if I now go into Home Assistant, and we're gonna go into ESP Home, add our ESP Home device. That's a good sign, it shows up. And it's showing up with all of our controls. We have the up, down, uh, we can set the height manually. Does it actually do anything? It works. Up. And look at that. The actual height of the desk is like rising in real time with the display on the front. It's actually like perfectly in sync with the display on the front. That's awesome. That's so cool. Ran into a slight flaw in my plan here. As I was coming to come in to cable manage all of this that comes from the controller and the motors, I noticed that they've actually got this really cool cable management tray that kind of hooks on onto the frame of the desk just using some magnets. And then you basically just tuck up all of the wires into the cable tray like so, and then stick it on the other side using the magnets and it kind of just holds it all there. But that does mean that because I've made a really short wire, we kind of can't get the wire through to plug in our voice box. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just to stick this up in the middle here, like this, plug the cable in, and hopefully because there is a gap, it'll work fine with the microphone and speaker. If not, I'll just run a longer wire and extend it out of the tunnel and just set it here. But hopefully up inside the desk will be a good solution for now. I have to say, I'm absolutely loving how clean everything is on this setup. There's just so much opportunity for cable management on this desk. I mean, obviously you have the entire computer that raises up with the desk, which makes managing all the cables really easy. And then there was like the magnetic um, cable management tray underneath, which really helps with the cable management, as well as the cable management tray at the back. And then each of the monitors has also got like built-in cable management through the arms, which is really, really helpful. And the whole thing is just super clean. Even if I raise it up to the top level, even at standing height, there's just those two cables, one for the power for the desk and one for the um, little power bar that sits on top of the desk. That's all you really see. And I think I could make them a little bit clearer. In fact, if you have any suggestions for how to improve kind of those two cables there, that would be really useful and keep the whole thing clean. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. Really great cable management on this desk. Now, of course, Home Assistant doesn't have a desk entity specifically built into it so that we can say things like, okay, Nabu, raise my desk, because otherwise it's just gonna fail and tell us that it can't find that device. 
So how do we actually control our desk using our voice? And the way we do that is with an automation using the custom sentence trigger, which is gonna let us put in basically any phrase we want and have it match that automation whenever we speak it. And we can use it for basically any voice command we want, not specific to a desk, but for any other function. So the way you do that is to come into an automation and we're gonna create a trigger and we're just gonna search for sentence We'll search the sentence trigger. And basically it's just a case of entering in the phrases that we want to control our desk. So in this case, I'm gonna say, raise my desk. And then in the action, now that we've added our ESP32 S3 that we tested earlier, we just need to search for button. It's button press. And we're gonna find the stand preset on our flexi spot desk, which is that one. And we'll hit save and went in and created the exact same for lower my desk. So now if we say, okay, Nabu, lower my desk, hopefully it's actually gonna start lowering and our custom voice command will work. <laughs> don't fall, don't fall. Our custom voice command worked perfectly there and the desk came all the way down. So now we can use custom commands for up, down, as well as just use it as a general voice assistant for temperature control or setting lights on and off, anything you would use a voice assistant for, it works perfectly. And now we can say things like, okay, Nabu, raise my desk. How cool is that? We do need to kind of beef up the voices or the home assistant side because it's running on a Raspberry Pi 4 with uh, the smallest kind of voice model we can fit on there. And it's kind of a little bit slow. So we'll try and beef that up and uh, improve the, the the speed of it, so nice, it works. Now you might be thinking, yeah, that's cool and all using your voice to raise and lower the desk, but if the controls are right here, wouldn't it be much faster to just use the controls? And whilst having a speaker connected directly to the desk is really handy for other voice commands, and it's also in a really great location, some of the more practical automations that I want to build with a standing desk is that I personally hate sitting down all day but I often forget to take a break or I lose track of time and forget to stand up or whatever. So one of the practical automations I really want to build is to use an everything presence light and its zoning capabilities so that if I enter the desk zone and the desk is in the sitting position and it's been in the sitting position for say an hour, then automatically raise the desk and remind me to actually take a break. The other automations you can do are things like read your calendar and if you have a meeting coming up in say five minutes time then automatically put the desk into the sitting position for example. I'm sure lots of you have automated desks inside of Home Assistant already and you've been using an automated desk for years so I would really love to hear what automations you build with Home Assistant and your standing desks. Do let me know down in the comments. I really want to get the most out of using a standing desk. Like I say, I've never used one before, so I'm really looking forward to trying it out and getting the most out of it. So do leave your suggestions down in the comments. That's the new desk pretty much complete. And we've actually been using them for a few days since this video finished. And I am really, really happy with how it all turned out. Being able to stand up and do my work from my desk is a big game changer for me because I loathe sitting down all day. So that's been a massive win. The desks themselves are actually really surprising. Obviously I've never used a standing desk before, but I kind of expected the motor to be like a little bit jerky as it came down, but these desks are super, super smooth as they go up and down uh, with the dual motors and the quad motors. Really, really impressed with all of the kit. Shout out FlexiSpot in general actually for just being general bros throughout this whole thing. Obviously they did not sponsor this video in any way, but they were just super cool about it. I was like, will you send over some desks for me to hack up and make smart with Home Assistant? Because I've always wanted an automated desk in Home Assistant. And they were like, yeah, sure. And pretty much asked no questions at all. They just sent over the stuff. So that was really cool. And I also really love how they just leave that secondary controller port open and they haven't tried to lock it down, which obviously they could do, but they just leave it open and they're like, yeah, just do what you want. Use your hardware how you want to use it. And they just leave it open for you to, to kind of add your own accessories with, which I think is really, really cool. I actually think we're gonna have some codes that they're gonna provide maybe down in the description if you want to get a discount on any of the stuff you see here. 
I will put that down in the description along with all of the parts and the code and the schematics, anything like that, you will find down in the description if you want to follow along and do this project for yourself. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much fun as I had making it. It was a really fun project and I'm so glad that it turned out as well as it did. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I'll see you in the next video.